Welcome to Location, the local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Locator. Catholic Relief Services recently held a discussion on the Global Solidarity Network on the topic of water security. The two-week event was featured as an online discussion and involved students and faculty. Presenters spoke about the need for worldwide water security. Participants were able to interact and ask questions of the presenters. The Pennsylvania Symphonic Winds is an electric musical orchestra that plays a variety of music. The group rehearses at Valley Forge Military Academy, just a few blocks from Cabrini. On March 13th, the group put on a special performance for Cabrini in the Grace Hall Atrium. The Community Service Outreach Club held a Make a Card event in the Wolfington Center to thank the U.S. troops around the world. The purpose of this event was so that students can show their support for the military's efforts. The cards were personalized with thank you notes and other caring messages for the troops. Pat Shiraki was presented with the 2011 Ivy Young Willis Award. The award program was started by William G. Willis to honor women who made contributions in the field of public affairs. Shiraki's message about greatness in life was an inspiration to many who attended the event. Now let's check in with Melissa Webb to find out more. Hi, I am Melissa Webb on set with Location. In the mansion, students, faculty, and staff gathered to witness Dr. George introduce CBS3 News anchor Pat Shiraki. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome Pat Shiraki to our campus today for the Ivy Young Rose Award. But as you know, we welcome Pat into our home every day. The Ivy Young Willis Award was established by William G. Willis to honor women who have made an outstanding contribution in the field of public affairs. I'm just so happy to be here at Cabrini and to be able to accept this, uh, this award. Shiraki became the recipient of the 2011 Ivy Young Willis Award because of her deep involvement in several social causes and service with nonprofits. I have a lot of different passionate interests, and one in particular is having the opportunity to be able to speak to young women about how to cope with life. I think that that's really important. I think there are a lot of young women who really struggle with that. You know, they want to be able to have a career, they want to be able to have a social life, they want to be able to get a good education, but they don't always know how to balance all of that. And so what I really try to do is to help um, inspire young women to know that they can do all of it, but maybe not all at the same time. Congratulations to Pat Shiraki on another achievement in her career. I'm Melissa Webb, back to you at the news desk. And those were your top stories in The Loquitur. For more information, pick up a copy around campus or visit thelocator.com. Over spring break, students and staff headed down to West Virginia to help families in need. Let's check in with Ian for more. While some students were donning a swimsuit over mid-semester break, others were donning a tool belt. A group of 15 students and two faculty headed down to Montgomery, West Virginia to rebuild houses of families in need, as well as immerse themselves in the culture of the Appalachians. Senior communication major and student leader Ariel Frischa explains. The work students completed at the two sites included demolition, putting up drywall, laying down flooring, painting, and much more. In all, it's an experience that no one will forget for a very, very long time. I'm Ian O'Neill, On Location. Spring has finally arrived. With warm weather on the way, many students are getting excited to enjoy time outside. Let's take a look at what some people enjoy about spring. After a long winter, many people are looking forward to spring. We talked to a few students to see what they are most looking forward to about spring. My favorite thing about spring is definitely the weather, and I love on Cabrini's campus how the trees come into blossom and everything's pretty and everyone sits outside and hangs out all day and skateboarding, baseball, 
and um, of course the killer geese on campus. I think my favorite part of spring is has to be the warm weather. I like to go outside and grill with my friends. My favorite part about spring at Cabrini is that the geese come back and chase people. The flowers come out and everything is really colorful and I actually like the geese on campus because they bring some life to the boring winter atmosphere. The spring brings many things to look forward to, like the Phillies and plenty of outdoor activities. I'm Megan McSloy on location, back to you at the news desk. And now let's take a look back in history. In an effort to raise funds to pay off debts and defend the new American territories won from the French in the Seven Years' War, the British government passed the Stamp Act. In 1765, the legislation levied a direct tax on all materials printed for commercial and legal use in the colonies. This included newspapers and pamphlets to playing cards and dice. At 4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, the worst accident in the history of the U.S. nuclear power industry began when the pressure valve on the Unit 2 reactor at Three Mile Island failed to close. Cooling water contaminated with radiation drained from the open valve into adjoining buildings and the core began to dangerously overheat. And that was your week in history. Now let's take a trip around the world. The United Nations authorized a no-fly zone to keep Colonel Muammar al Qaddafi from using air power against rebel forces in Libya. American and European forces began strikes against Qaddafi's forces on Saturday. Colonel Qaddafi calls the actions against his forces as unjustified on Libyan sta state television. CIA security officer Raymond Davis was released on Wednesday after being jailed for killing two Pakistanis in Langhor. After meeting with the victims' families, Pakistani officials arranged compensation to resolve the case. The Pakistani and American officials were eager to resolve the case before the Langhor High Court ruling for or against diplomatic immunity. Japan's nuclear crisis has turned into a disaster after an explosion on Tuesday caused damage to the vessels that hold the nuclear core. Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Kan addressed the nation to say that the radiation had already spread and that there is a high risk for more leaks. Mr. Kan asked the J Japanese people to remain calm. And that was your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Holly for your sports news. I heard you have some news on the lacrosse team for us, Holly. I do, Pat. This past weekend, the nationally ranked Cabrini men's lacrosse team defeated FDU Florham 11-6. In the game, seniors Dan Terenic and Paul Skolsky each tallied four points in the sixth all-time win against FDU Florham. This win brings the Cavaliers' overall record to 3-3. Three and three. Their next game will be on Saturday at 2 o'clock against Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. The women's lacrosse team has yet to claim a win this season, pushing their record to 0-4 after falling to nationally ranked TCNJ 16-0. Senior Gabrielle Gorby led the Lady Cavs offense with three shot attempts. The Lady Cavs are set to take on their first ESAC opponent of the season, Immaculata University, at 1 p.m. on Saturday at the Edith Robb Dixon Field. Just because the men's basketball team is out of the playoffs doesn't mean that there's no more basketball on Cabrini's campus. Here's Ali Rodalico with Cabrini's intramural basketball team, the Little Buddies. Now that Cabrini men's basketball team has finished their season, it's time for Cabrini to focus on the intramural basketball team for playoffs. The Little Buddies, who are led by Jimmy Fuda and Matt McColgan, went undefeated in the regular season and are the fan pick to win the championship this year. I had the chance to talk with them before the game. So since the Varsity Boys basketball team is out of the NCAA tournament now, you guys won 6-0 in your intramural season. Do you feel as though that there's a lot of pressure on you to bring home another championship here at Cabrini? No, Al, and can I call you Al? Yeah. Okay, Al. Uh, no, no, we don't, see, we don't feel much pressure at all here. No, we're just taking it one game at a time, just doing our thing, and uh, just taking home, taking them to the gold. In the beginning of the basketball season, you were with Cabrini's varsity team and then you were getting a bunch of offers from the little buddies. What was the main impact that made you decide to switch over to this team? Well, let me start off by saying first that the varsity team, great team, great bunch of fellas, pleased to play with them, great coaching staff, great coach. But unfortunately, Marcus Khan couldn't offer me the money I was looking for. And that's when Jimmy, aka The Miracle, he came in, gave me a phone call. We talked about four hours one night, signed an interest, said he's got a good team. He wants me to be a part of that team, 
and I felt like it was my, my duty, being from another country, to support that team, and I decided to go with him. Not only are the intramurals fun for the players, but the fans can also get involved. So would you consider yourself the Little Buddies' number one fan? Yeah, I love the Little Buddies. I come to all their games. The boys are great. And what's that that I saw on the back of your t-shirt? I actually have all their signatures on the back of their Oh, yeah, yeah, if you look right there, that's all of them. Number one fan, too. Better keep that shirt. It's going to be worth a lot of money someday. Millions. Be sure to look around campus for more chances to play intramural sports. I'm Allie Rodolico on location. Back to you at the news desk. That's all the sports news I have for you this week. Be sure to tune into location every week for your Cabrini sports news. Thanks, Holly. Now let's check in with Felicia for your album of the week. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your album of the week. Currently, Chicago's own Lupe Fiasco is holding the number one spot on the Billboard 200 chart with his latest album, Laser. This album delivers a lot of influential lyrics and a lot of pent up emotion from artist Lupe. Lupe targets the flaw system and discusses many topics that most rappers don't even consider rapping about. Lasers gets a four out of five stars in my book. If you're interested in purchasing this album, check it out on iTunes.com. Be sure to come out on Wednesday, April 6th to join WIBF for the annual Funny Fest competition. To sign up as a contestant, be sure to check out the WIBF website. That's all, back to the studio. Thanks, Felicia. Now let's go to Danielle for your red carpet rants. Hey guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. I don't know about you guys, but the warm weather has me wanting to be outside a lot more. The only unfortunate thing is the geese around campus seem to agree with me. Check out Justin Silner and I on a wild goose chase, literally. I was walking down the path and I could just feel his footsteps behind me. Last year, there were 10 geese attacks here on the campus of Cabrini College. This year, we're trying to put a stop to this madness. Oh my god, oh my god. Cabrini geese are evil. They try to kill you, they walk up on you. You know they're chilling, they're nice. You think that yeah, it's okay to walk by them and then, I don't know, something snaps in their brain and then here they go chasing you, flying after you. And then you gotta take off running to class. So if you were already late, you were gonna be on time now. Excuse me, sir, um, can I, oh my god. <laughs> Creeping, scaring me. Should I run or should I just keep walking? Well, there you have it. From Cabrini College, I'm Justin Sulner. Have a great night. Well, Beater Down Brown is up to his old tricks again. After an interview on Good Morning America with Robin Roberts, Chris was apparently so enraged after being questioned about his 2009 falling out with Rihanna that he broke a window in Good Morning America's studio. Sounds like Chris has a few more issues to talk out with his therapist. On a much sadder note, news broke recently that Elizabeth Taylor passed away. Her memory will always live on, especially with all of her husbands. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm about to go on a wild goose chase again. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with Ian for just a thought. Hey. It's Ian with just a thought. Actually, I'm quite content this week. So in lieu of me ranting about something, I'm going to advise you to make a difference today. Give somebody a smile, a compliment, donate to charity, stand up for something you believe in, even when others do not, and vice versa. Life is too short to get caught up in the things that don't matter. So do something that does. I'm Ian, and that's just a thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Enjoy that spring weather, Cabrini.